Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and this today we're looking the at The Black Phone, released which this premiered year. at Fantastic Fest Facts. in 2021. The Black Phone takes <laughs> place in the 70s. Yo, he did this video because of me, yo. I did ask for this video, bro. You know how crazy it is, like, to just ask for, like, like he did did this video because of me i'm sorry like not to not to two my own he he did bro and follows he could have been did this bro he was a teen i just got motion it's we have motion not not uh, we have motion. danger abducted by a local serial killer the kid is locked up in a room with an old phone which he uses to communicate with his captor's previous victims it's a serial killer crime flick with some supernatural touches that highlights the resiliency of youths the movie is based on the short story of the same name written by joe hill his stories have been adapted for the screen before perhaps most notably within the tall grass <laughs> hill is the son of legendary novelist stephen king and it shows this adaptation I just hit the uh, I just hit the, the boys group chat with the bro y'all link without me. D Y dot 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 K. <laughs> <laughs> so full of classic king tropes, you'd be forgiven if you thought it took place in Maine. The Black Phone was written by Scott Derrickson, with a screenplay co-written by Derrickson and C. Robert Cargill. These are the guys who brought us the modern classic Sinister, as well as the first Doctor Strange movie. Derrickson was originally supposed to direct in the Multiverse of Madness too, but he left the Bro, project I wish I due to in theaters, bro. Most likely, it would have made he it wanted 10 to make it better. more of a horror film. The good news is that when he left that movie, he and Cargill turned around and made this one. The Black Phone is one of many, many amazing horror movies that had How'd a wide release in 2022. One? While it didn't quite electrify me as much as some of the others, I think it's really well made with phenomenal performances, specifically from the two lead kids and Ethan Hawke in a rare villainous turn as the grabber. It also manages to have an optimism to it, despite the dark subject matter. Ethan Hawke called it a a scary movie with a heart of gold. For anyone who finds comfort yeah, in Stephen King yeah, stories, exactly. with small towns yo, and Ethan Hawk, Yo, Ethan Hawk is damn near yo no cap. Like Ethan Hawk's family is so. So first of all, their family is talented, bro. First of all, they got a very talented family. He's a great actor, bro. I didn't realize how good he was, bro. At all. Here he go. Yo, Josh Sosa. Shut. Don't 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 run your yibber yabbers at me. I will slap the fucking lips off your face. Phone will shoot. Who the is that guy talking to? A couple to? of good scares along the way. How many kills will the grabber? Uh, what? Yo, this movie was so far, bro. Hello? Oh, sweetie, I'm so glad I caught you. Mom, <laughs> how'd you get this number? Get off his. Yo, ain't the warrior put. Yo, yo, are you the warrior of rotten you too? Now what? Oh, don't you worry about that at all. I was just putting together my Christmas list and I was wondering if there was anything you think would be good for me this year. <laughs> oh yeah, that's easy. Today's sponsor, Raycon. What the? That earbud company <laughs> yo, you're always- Yo, 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 so, I swear to God, 100% true story, Jet. Some random white woman added me on Twitter one day and said, oh, my God, Ray condones. I love your Raycons. <laughs> Yo, so just ran. I swear to God, randomly, bro, <laughs> out of nowhere. I'm like, what? Like, and, and I'll go through the, I go to the page. Another fake. You can look it up. Go look it up. You can look it up. Yo, I'm going to eat another one. Is that crazy? That's crazy. He's talking about. Oh, mom, it is not just earbuds, okay? No, do they that. have wireless Come earbuds, on. headphones, and speakers that offer premium sound, a comfortable fit, and battery life <laughs> up to 54 hours. Wow, that's so <laughs> many things. <you> know? <laughs> it's so James, I'm sorry. Break F at the link. The movie begins with, oh, son of a Steven, a baseball game. Classic King. It's 1978 in North Denver, and 13 years. Question before this video starts. Y'all think I should get this headset customized? Like, I think I want to do it all white. I think I might buy another one and get it customized. Your old pitcher Finney Blake gets bested by I don't, Bro, once you find your headset, bro, I can't wear the like the Astros are nice as like. Don't get me wrong, but the Astros just not. I don't know, bro. It's just. Uh, I like the Astros, but the wire, the wire is annoying. Oh my God, I look so good right now. I'm sorry. So 
annoying. Bruce Yamada. It was and a little the quality of was- Man, your arm is mint. You almost had me. Bruce slow rides around town, looking cooler Aye, than I ever I told have or bro, will be. Blazing. But his good times come to an end when he sees a black van, bringing a fade to black to this baseball boy. An 8mm missing persons montage gives us a taste for this movie's 70s setting. I love a good opening credit sequence that isn't just names over landscape shots, especially <laughs> when it evokes the filmmaker's previous horror work. Keep an eye out for any lawnmowers, am I right? Finney lives with his younger sister Gwen in a place so suburban there are connected backyard paths leading to the school. But this Denver suburb ain't entirely Colorado. It's a good There's movie. been a string of child abductions. Hey, Frog, thank you for the 25 months. unknown culprit nicknamed the Grabber. This is the late 70s, after all. The age of infamous serial killers like John Wayne Gacy, yep. Ted Bundy, yep. and David Berkowitz. Yep. Finney has to face bullying at school. Classic King. But thankfully, he has a karate kid in his corner. Robin Ariano is one tough mammer jammer, as seen earlier when he was fighting a big bully named Moose. Moose swung a slur and a fist at Robin, only to get his ass whooped. <laughs> Holy Christian, Batman, is Robin going for the Impaler? Mm. Nah, he stops short of a kill switch, but he definitely makes Moose unprettier. Though we learn that Ooh. Finny helps Robin with his math homework, this doesn't feel like a transactional relationship. These two boys seem like actual this is the friends, black phone. or at the Second very high, least, affectionate the mentor and mentee. You're gonna have to stand up for yourself one of these days. Finney's home life is also a big bag of suck. His yeah, dad, dad Terrence has such a short fuse, mere bread box banging and cereal slurping can set him straight the fuck off. You think you can slurp? Got a little louder. <laughs> Finn's pap is abusive and alcoholic as hell. <laughs> But the kids adapt and find a way to live with him. <laughs> Watching William Castle movies probably helps. Oh shit, the Tingler! Finney must be a podcast listener. The Yo, it's, it's like, I don't know, man. It's just, it's funny. I don't know, bro. It's. That is crazy. Like I, 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 I feel so bad for anybody that has ever been in that situation. Don't get me wrong, but that shit is fucking like hilarious for some reason. Like. It just tickled my funny bone. Blake Home is the best showcase Sorry. of this movie's attention to period detail. Production designer Patty Podesta helped recreate director Scott Derrickson's memories of growing up in late 1970s North Denver. In fact, it was his decision to set the movie here. Joe Hill's original story takes place in Illinois. And it's not just the set deck and wardrobe that makes this feel so much like the 70s. Cinematographer Brett Jukowitz matched the movie's visual style to the era with his lighting and color palette. He used a Have lot of ever browns seen a movie and being Recorded shot with lenses say. that gave the film a softer period look. Well, Finney wakes up the next morning to random some real hair life on my arm and it just be one hair. By their dad. She the had been questioned at school like, earlier by two detectives looking one into fucking the missing hair. kids. They heard that Gwen told a friend about a dream she had Shit is the grabber had black balloons. A detail that's true, but hasn't been released to the public. Turns out Gwen's got out. a bit of the shine, or otherwise nondescript magical power. Classic King. Terrence is irate that Gwen's been talking about prophetic dreams, and in a painful scene, beats her until she repeats that she doesn't have powers. My dreams are just dreams! Zing! My dreams are just dreams! Amazing work by young actor Great Madeline McGraw, fucking, yo, who Derrickson says came up with movie, that final, bro. somewhat defiant line delivery on her own. My favorite <laughs> acting moment in the whole movie, and maybe in anything I've ever done. And she turns and she looks at him and she gets mad. And she's like, my dreams are just dreams. And I didn't tell her to do that. That's a nine-year-old girl knowing her character. Me. That's why that's Great the only reason why it's funny. I done did that shit before I get my ass beat. I've been begging my mom to let me watch Sinister. But she said, definitely oh. not. She's even yeah, shaking everybody her head. Hit that, mm, like that shit, everybody does that, bro. That's why right. it's like. <laughs> I love that Gwen is a strong kinda. little kid who's not overly precocious, even when she's cussing out cops like she were Beavis. Yeah. I took him down, because obviously I'm the grabber, you dumb fucking fart knocker. Now we see that her toughness is a way to mask the trauma she has from her broken home. Finney's crappy life is about to get crappier, since Robin, like Bruce before him, stumbles upon that same black van and suffers the same black fade out. So With his buddy buddy bodyguard me. gone, Finney and Gwen have to fight like, for themselves. Like, how the fuck did he get taken and he knows how to fight? Which, that didn't make I no mean, sense to me. I mean, you know what that is, so, man. That so it's classic king. I'll stop pointing out king tropes now, but this does make me want to do a random video all about him. What? After school, the young that. walker crossfades his way home. Damn, all these dissolves for just one street? Slow ass motherfucking Finney over here. The pace picks up when Finney comes across a black van, and a figure stumbles out of it sounding like an animaniac. Not <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? Not oh, okay, cause at first I thought it was more like... <laughs> Grown man versus a child. Okay, so 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Child that knows MMA. Grown man that literally is fuck you right that grown man's strength just uh, it doesn't matter like the nigga knows mma like he could at least have a, a part-time magician and to prove it he says abra could grab ya. Man, like they could have did a, a mouthful of sleep finney comes to in a grimy basement where the man now revealed to be the grabber shows off his creepy ppe nothing bad it's going to happen here. You know, I'm not sure why, but I'm having a hard time believing this guy. The Grabber is played by Ethan Hawke, oh who my previously God. worked with Derrickson on Sinister. We've also seen him as the family patriarch Yo, in he's the middle original Purge. The Black Phone relies on Hawke's performance for its tension, and he delivers, giving the Grabber an unsettling, almost split-like instability. The Grabber locks up for the night, so Finney explores his new scare B&B, which includes a dingy bathroom and some rolled up floor mats. It also includes the titular telephone, which, despite being disconnected, rings one night. The grabber says it's just static electricity, since the phone hasn't worked since his boyhood. That's a problem for Finney, because the grabbers also soundproof this basement. In crawl space, no one can hear you scream. A couple of nights go by, and the phone rings again. This time, there's a caller on the line. The boy on the other end doesn't this remember his own out. name, this but he does right say here? some familiar phrases. Tripping me out. Finney realizes he's talking to the ghost of Bruce Yamada. First time caller, hey. long time dead king. His early life and abduction are played in another Kodachromi montage. Bruce tells him that the phone rings for everyone, but Finney's the only one who's been able to hear their voices. I was surprised to learn these calls weren't done in post-production. The phone was hooked up so the kid actors could actually talk during the scenes. We hooked it up so that when we pick up this phone <laughs> on the outside of the set, uh, the black phone inside, Will ring. Bruce tells Finney about a loose tile in the bathroom, which he removes to try and Shawshank his way to freedom. He hides the progress with one of the mats and turns in for another kidnap. Uh, like a like a napping kid. She the next crazy. day, before sunrise, the grabber brings him breakfast. On his way out, he seemingly forgets to lock the door, but when Finney moves to escape, he receives another no. phone call. It's a different voice this time, who Finney identifies as so deceased far, bro. paper boy Billy Showalter. Another montage shows his life in kidnapping, done by a like him learning grabber. through Billy was tells just Finney so far, like, door is a trap. That's, that was, the that, that is, is this is what made the movie far. Damn, look like that grabber been grabbing them dumbbells. Know what I mean? Billy also mentions that he <laughs> tore a cable loose and hid it away. Finney finds it this and James using a rolled-up mat as a guide, snakes it around the bars of the hey, basement's yo. only window. Wow, I gotta call this kid the next time I lose the drawstring inside my hoodie. Finney tries to climb to freedom, but is unable to unlatch the window before the grate breaks off. The survival scenes are one of the best parts of the Black yeah. Phone. I love watching a smart, capable character character try their best to escape an awful situation. Gwen is having visions of a live-action NES Paperboy adaptation, but the telepathic teenager would rather just know where her brother is. Unable to find Finney on her own, she asks for help from her super shitty dad. Terrence reveals their mother also had visions, meaning Gwen's power <laughs> is inherited. This might explain why- Yo, Bruce, how do I confront- confront my family about lying to me and talking behind my back and lying on my name? Damn, um, he kept spamming it, so I, I decided I answer. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> uh, I feel like, <laughs> like this nigga could either be okay. So look, it, it's not, it's not funny. I'm just thinking about the situations that it could be because this could be a 10 year old kid that just hate like doing the dishes and like or it could be real now if it's real and not the other shit i just said to be honest bro you just gotta be straight up bro sometimes family isn't family they just relatives you know all family isn't family sometimes it's just facts bro you gotta confront them especially if you're grown if you like 20 years old still letting people like get over on you you gotta have a you gotta you gotta start building your backbone up slowly finney is the only one who is able to hear the ghost He's not gonna get but finney and gwen's me. mom eventually became overwhelmed by the visions and took her own life i just i don't 
I don't want that future for you, sweetheart. Ah, so the old, this is up. for your own good argument. That's never fucked up a kid before. Terrence is played by prolific character actor Jeremy Davies, who was in Ravenous, which we've covered on the podcast, and of course, Lost. Yeah, yeah, saving Private Ryan and all that. Dude will forever be Daniel Faraday to me. The police are conducting their own search for Finney. While going door to door, they meet Max, an eccentric out-of-towner who's crashing on his brother's couch. Max is played by James Ransone, last seen on the kill count as adult Eddie in It Chapter 2. Oh He's also God. a Derrickson regular, having appeared in both sinister movies as Deputy So-and-So. Max is working on an amateur investigation and believes he's narrowed down where the grabber lives. The cops don't take him seriously, though. Probably since Ziggy been dipping into White Mike's supply. Maybe if Max spent less time powdering his nose, he'd realize the boy he's looking for is in the basement right below him, since the brother he's staying with has been moon knighting as the grabber. Finney has brought another meal by the grabber, who's perplexed by the break in his murder routine. Everything's different. Nothing's going right. It's enough to put the sad <laughs> mouth on his mask. The grabber's instantly iconic mask was designed by Gore Daddy Tom Savini, with input from Derrickson and sketch artist Levi Simpson. They were inspired by movies like Mr. Sardonicus and The Man Who Laughs. The modular mask, with its three different mouths, was created mm. by special effects supervisor Jason Baker. In his Pittsburgh studio, he had to make nearly 40 copies, thanks to the mouth variations, stunt requirements, and COVID restrictions. Because of COVID, they, we couldn't let Ethan and the photo double share the same mask because he'd be breathing on it, you know, whole cross contamination. Damn, thing. So then we they had to make a whole separate interviewed. set for the photo double. The mask is a resin fiberglass hybrid with comfortable foam inside. The one I have here on set wasn't screen used in the movie, but it was used for promotional materials That's and fine. sent by a friend at Universal. Thanks, Mark, John thank Luca. The grabber says he'll let Finney go if he tells him Dot, his name. But after months, catching him in a lie, he leaves with the door unlocked to tempt him again. Finney doesn't take the bait and is awoken that night by some extreme yoga. This backbending specter is Griffin Stagg, another victim whose ghostly appearance will get him added to the kill count. Does that mean I should have counted the Grady girls in the Shining kill count? I mean, yeah, sure, I haven't watched probably. The Shining Griffin yet. Griffin tells Finney the Grabber is playing a game called Naughty Boy. As long as Finney doesn't play, the Grabber can't kill him yet, but that'll only be true for a little bit longer, so he'd better find a way out of there. Griffin says the house's door is secured with a bike lock that I will once play belonged the Simpsons. to him. He wrote the combination uh, on the wall, me. but can't remember how the digits break up, whether it's 23317 or 23317 or what have you. The afterlife amnesia means Finney <laughs> will have to try all the combinations, all while playing another game. Don't wake Grabby from Parker Brothers. Finney successfully escapes his Gattaca prison, but on his way out, a barking bad boy wakes up his catnapping kidnapper. Finney screams for help outside, but the grabber catches up to me him off. and threatens him into silence. You say one fucking word. And I will gut you like a what the fuck did With he no help coming from the neighborhood watch, the grabber puts an end to Finn's adventure time and brings him back to the basement. Ethan Hawke had been reluctant That's what to I was trying to figure out the whole time I was watching Because he was it. worried people would see him a different way. Like, this nigga got he half He frequently mask. mentioned how Jack Nicholson was always seen as crazy after The Shining. He decided to give it a shot, though, because of the material, the director, and where he was in his career. The good news is I'm 51 now, and so... Uh, it might be the time for me to go to the dark side. Still, yeah. he found it difficult to play That's such fine. an evil character because there's no justification for his actions. Normally, I say that I'm always like to be my character's lawyer. If I was my character's lawyer in this case, I think I would, you know, I would resign and just let the guy <laughs> go to the death penalty, you know I mean? <laughs> his solution was to play the grabber like a wounded animal. He also said it was easy to turn off the character as soon as the cameras cut. Get the balloons! Okay. Yeah, okay. You can hear all about it in my interview with him, director Derrickson, and the mask makers Jason Baker and Tom Savini. A frustrated Finney is awakened by another call, this time from a ghost resting in no amount of peace. Can we watch something else, bro? Are you scared, Ben Man Two Hands? Finney realizes he's talking to Pinball Vance Hopper, a notorious school bully who the grabber grabbed earlier. Vance's Yo, vicious Bam, reputation Bam Man is two hands in a flashback scared, you guys. he beats up two kids who ruined his pinball see those two hands we see him aren't taking outside fighting, by the police for fucking grabbing and sucking and slobbing on dick. She sits in Tough for a free enough, ride nigga. in the popo mobile. Like, what the fuck is wrong? Like, what's wrong with you? You can't have a name like that, bro, and act like that. Since Seps Finney's latest Tough phone enough, call. Nigga. This is it. 
horrifying nightmare in your pathetic it's not even life. that scary as Gwen takes stock of the Barbie dream house Vance reveals that when he was a captive he broke through a wall in the bathroom he was killed before he could escape but Finney follows Yo, suit are they done with stranger with things a toilet lid like it were Zepp Hindle's skull his exit is blocked by a freezer so he dismantles the rest of the toilet and uses a washer to unscrew that the shit back panel got butt, unfortunately bro. the freezer can't be that opened need from to be the done. inside which makes sense it is a freeze her not a freeze him exhausted Finney breaks down, believing his fate is sealed. It's hard to believe this is 15 year old actor Mason Thames's first feature film role. Due to COVID, he had to audition what? through Zoom, a process he That's found hard. awkward he due good. to Wi Fi issues. Glad his bandwidth came through, since the kid does great going toe to toe with veteran actor Ethan Hawke. The phone rings yet again, but this Dumbass time the caller is a friendly Gio. ghost. Hey, Finn. Uh, you was better plus it's Robin, L here plus to comfort ratio his friend plus in this time of need and to finally get added and a half, to the kill count. Plus Since you're Robin five, died three. recently, he's more coherent than the other spirits. We're all Riri created Kassar, for the thank movie, you for the five, actually. In Joe Hill's story, Bruce is the only ghost kid caller. But since creepy dead children are a forte of Derrickson's, the others thank were you. added to the film. Their makeup was all practical, done by department head Rick Poor. Seems like they had a lot of fun on set. Robin says it's time for Finney to start standing up for himself and teaches him how to weaponize the phantom phone you raise the phone take a fast step this back. part was far step forward step back and swing Aw, they even turned it into a little line dance. That's nice. With Finney's training day complete, Robin lets him know this will be the last black phone call, and the two friends say an emotional goodbye. I miss you, Robin. You can get out for me. Hey. Following Robin's advice, Finney packs so the phone fun. tight with dirt to give it heft, then kicks off his ultimate plan to bag that fucking with this movie. Grabber. Outside, Gwen races around the neighborhood looking now, like an appetizer for a killer clown. Good thing there aren't Watching actually it for the any first scary time, it's a pretty good movie. <laughs> Just a bunch of scary ghost kids it who reference. stop her in front of the house from her visions, which she identifies from its front lawn foliage and address number. After booking it back home, Gwen hollers back at one of the detectives. He volunteers the police force as tribute to meet her at the house she's found. At the same time, Max has a coke fueled eureka and realizes his brother's house is smack dab this in the middle me of off. the abduction zone. He's a as fucking Pink idiot. Floyd's on the run blares in the background, he makes his way down to the basement, where he's shocked to find another house guest. No fucking way. He takes a little too long to collect his bearings though, and fails to notice his brother, who buries an axe in Max, killing him with one swift blow. What a dirty, <laughs> bloody shame. The cops arrive to save the day, but just like in Silence of the Lambs, they're in the wrong place at the right time. Turns out the house Gwen directed them to is abandoned, of the living at least. Her visions were never taking her to Finney, but rather to the Grabber's Dead Kids Society. Carpe dem kids bodies, coppers. That means Finney still needs to fend off the white devil and his white fang by himself. He dodges an axe swing and runs to the bathroom, leading the grabber right into Finney's trap house. I love how the advice from all the previous basement trap boys house. plays into this final confrontation. Finney uses Billy's cable to trip the grabber into the mm, pit that nigga. he dug earlier using the tile Bruce told crazy. him about. The grabber breaks his ankle on the grate pulled down from the window. Finney puts Robin's training to good use, mm. beating the bad man down with the phone. Mason Thames was excited to do a lot of his character's physical scenes himself, working under stunt coordinator Mark Riccardi. He said the only downside was the fake sweat they had to use. I know it's the most random thing, but it was like the greasiest, nastiest thing ever, and I ever. Oh, that was disgusting. The grabber gets grabby, <laughs> but is distracted when Finney pulls his mask off, allowing the boy to wrap the phone's cable around his neck. The phone rings once more, but now the bell's tolling for the grabber, who hears his previous victims taunting him through the receiver. Welcome to the end of your pathetic little life. Finn's arm is mint! With a final crank yank, Finney daybreaks the grabber's neck, and his body slides down beneath the floor to save the gravedigger some time. Finney placates the dog with a steak from the freezer, then makes his way upstairs. He he opens the combination lock and strolls out to freedom. We see that Finney's been kept in a Crazy house just across the street from where the bodies movie. were being stored. Gwen tearfully reunites with her brother, and they're shortly joined by their dad. Terrence begs them for forgiveness, but since they've probably heard this song before, the siblings opt for a silent side hug instead. Sometime later, Finney returns to school, where his reputation as a serial killer killer earns him some cred. With his newfound swagger, Finney strolls into science class, and the movie ends with him confidently sitting oh my next God, to a Imagine returning to school Benny after Finibici. that. How Jesus many people wound Christ. up as dead as an out-of-service telephone? Or, you know, landlines in general? Let's find out and get to the phone numbers. Mom, I'm Jesus. trying to film a kill count. Hello? Yeah, James, it's Zorin. Now, I know you took a week off of doing kill counts, so you might be a little rusty. 
but I'm here to make sure you can get to the numbers. What you're gonna want to <laughs> do, okay? Is Homicide for life. <laughs> Take a step back, oh, walk no. off screen, and count. Do it with me. Okay. Say a joke. Pause for laughter. Take a step back, walk off screen, and count. One more time. <laughs> Say a joke. Pause for laughter. I like this joke you got on. Step back, walk off screen, and count. You're ready, man. Go get him, tiger. <sighs> I really wish James hadn't killed me because dude bro's the new kill count champion. Damn, that Chucky looked crazy. What the fuck? Seven people died in the black phone, most of whom were kids. Eesh, that's a bummer. The victims were all male, giving us a big blue pie chart for a small black phone. You know, this count and gender breakdown has only happened once before on this show, with Christine, coincidentally based on a story by months. Stephen King. With a runtime of 103 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 14.71 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to the grabber. Most of this movie's oh kills are God. off screen, and it's grabbing to see Vinny up. finally stand up for himself. And I won't give a doll machete for this movie. It would feel weird to penalize a child murder for not being on screen. Did he do smile and that's it. Yet? The Black Phone premiered at Fantastic Fest before getting a wider release in 2022. Now, next Friday is a proof of concept short of the movie we're trying to produce called Pre game. Please be sure to tune in. We're really excited to share it with you all. Until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Cow. Thanks a lot for watching this Too Kill Cow. If you guys have been enjoying the sponsored segments lately... Smile was... It was alright. It, it was crazy how, how she got that. I would have been so mad.